episode 15 of the Fit Pro podcast. So, if you could imagine that you're kind of like um, a bird in a cage, but once you push up against that gate of the cage, it's unlocked, it swings right open, and you have a whole new world that you couldn't even imagine from inside that cage. But once you're out there, you can't imagine going back in. Welcome back, listeners. And before we get into the show, I just want to say a few words. As always, make sure you head to fitpropodcast.com and leave a review on your favorite episode. And if you haven't already, make sure you head to facebook.com forward slash fitpropod and leave us a like. It really means a lot. And if, while you're there, like some posts, share some posts, just get some exposure going, show the love, share the love. And listeners, I don't know if you know this or not, but we're actually also on Twitter. So it is twitter.com forward slash fit pro podcast or just at fit pro podcast. I'm on there every day for a few hours. Um, I'm absolutely addicted. Uh, Dick, addicted to Twitter at the moment. It's really an easy way for us to communicate, and um, yeah, I actually really enjoy it. So, if you got any questions, make sure you head to Twitter for Pro Podcast and leave us a question. But other than that, not much more housekeeping to go. I will catch you at the end. Enjoy this episode. Welcome back to the Fit Pro Podcast. I am your host Marvin Fares, and today we have. Zach Zeller on. I'm so excited. Zach is an author, a lecturer, and a practical nutrition coach who loves to help frustrated dieters out there break free from their diet ruts to cultivate confidence, happiness, and health. Starting off with friends and family, Zach's combination of plant-based nutrition, emotional intelligence, and habit force has spread into an effective system that women and men from all over the country seek out. Zach, are you ready to kill this man? Yeah, let's do it. Perfect, Zach. Take a moment, let the listeners know who you are, and we can get into the show. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, hearing that introduction, um, I kind of I have a confession to make, actually, that I'm not actually, I don't have any certifications, no letters behind my name. Uh, this time last year, I was actually about to enter my last year of um, biomedical engineering up at college. So... It was, I was kind of in a, in a place where I was just kind of going down the same path that I have been from schooling over and over and over again, um, because that's kind of what society tells you to fucking do, that you just sit down and you, you work hard and you keep working, and they don't really kind of get to the, to the part where you transfer to like a real life, where you have a job and a career and kind of how to balance everything. So I really kind of had to figure that on my own. Um, But yeah, in the midst of kind of all this engineering and work, uh, I was fat. Um, That's that's not actually a good way to describe it. I mean, I was I was like 20 pounds overweight, um, but I also had bad asthma, eczema all over my like forearms and legs is terrible, Um, terrible, like social anxiety. And I was just kind of trapped in my own body. And so for myself personally, since getting into high school as early as that, I've kind of been buying stuff online, different uh, info products, trying to figure out all the fitness and exercise stuff. And I mean, with all the shit that's on Google and the internet now, it, it took me a while, but I figured it out. And so as you were kind of talking about, my friends saw me kind of taking my health into my own hands and getting better over time. And um, once I kind of stopped with those the fad diets and found some really powerful stuff, I started making some more drastic transformations. And so they asked me what I was doing and I kind of helped them out. And then their friends asked them what they were doing and they got transferred to me. So it kind of turned into this thing that all these people were asking me for advice and help. And I remember I was kind of, it was last summer, and I was just kind of sitting at home thinking about what I'm going to do with my life. And I ended up actually just (laughs) booking a ticket to California to figure out 
online marketing and how to start my own business. And it was kind of crazy, but I just said, you know, it's, it's my life and this makes me really happy. I don't understand why I should kind of put what makes me happy in a corner and do what all this engineering stuff on the side is kind of like my official career. So I said, fuck it, spend pretty much all the money I had went to California and learned from these experts and these already really successful, uh, you know, online business guys like Bidges Koulian um, and John Romanello and I even met uh, Elliot Hulse at one of my trips. So it was really cool to be able to do that and to kind of transform my whole life and even the whole way that I thought about myself. Yeah, and that sounds amazing, dude. Because it, it looks, it sounds like you were on a path of discovery, and uh, I think a lot of the listeners can relate to that. Where society tells you to do one thing, but your 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 heart and your mind pulls you towards doing what you love. Is is that sort of the the, the track you were on? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. So, in people's minds, they have certain kind of mental shortcuts that make living easier, right? Because otherwise. If you had to think out every single decision you made, you'd get nothing done. So you have these, they're called heuristics or mental shortcuts. And one of them, it's kind of weird, it's you can't really imagine yourself feeling any other way than you feel right now. So if you could imagine that you're kind of like um, a bird in a cage, but once you push up against that gate of the cage, it's unlocked, it swings right open, and you have a whole new world that you couldn't even imagine from inside that cage. But once you're out there, you can't imagine going back in. So it's really a huge uh, paradigm shift, and really it's the way that society markets to you and the way that you think uh, about yourself and about what you're capable of that kind of sets up this little cage, but once you change those beliefs, it's really amazing what you can do. I mean, I'm just, I just start out and I was uh, in this kind of mastermind group of other people starting out and other people way ahead. Um, and just hearing their stories and hearing that, you know, they were going to dental school and then they decided to start, you know, in, uh, a company for helping men be more persuasive and charismatic charismatic, whoops, uh, to make more money, or, I don't know, they're working as, like, a mechanic, and they decided to just, just completely revamp their whole image of themselves and achieve so much more than they would in an entire lifetime. You basically described me. I used to be a mechanic. (laughs) Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, man, I used to be, uh, basically, it's a very similar story. I don't think a lot of the listeners know this either, but um, it was so, it feels like it was so long ago, but it was actually only maybe three years ago, three, four years ago, maybe. I became, I was, I did my apprenticeship and became a heavy duty mechanic, and I was doing the, the daily thing, going to work, doing my 12 hours, and something was missing. So I decided to, yeah, go on this path of discovery myself, started learning, started reading, started self development and um, became a personal trainer and ended up traveling the world on a cruise ship <laughs> so completely different worlds and uh, completely different mindsets and it's so true when you say you're like that bird stuck in a cage man I get I was I felt like I was just fucking frustrated and I needed to get out and once I got out I realized there's so many other avenues and pathways to take that. It, it just it, that blew my mind more than more than the fact that I was stuck in a fucking cage for five years. Oh yeah. And and man, it, it is actually very humbling. I I feel when you find uh, people out there like yourself, Zach, that yeah, you, you're so young and obviously you don't have everything figured out, but you do have a air of you that yeah, this guy sounds and this guy has proof that what he's doing he's actually enjoying and, and he's actually loving so hopefully we can teach some we can teach some of the listeners today that how to get on that part Zach. and that's what i want to focus on and j- just the beginning out of things but today in in your career 
have, is this what you do full time now, Zach, or is it still very much just uh, a hobby, or is this your full time thing? Uh, I like to tell myself it's my full time thing, but I actually do have a part time job, uh, just 20 hours um, at like a grocery store. But it's kind of so. Here's here's the the mental part of it that. It, yes, it is my career. Yes, this is what I'm doing full time. Um, but I'm, as I get the, the systems and build my clientele to do it officially full time, I still have a plan in place that, yes, I work at the grocery store. That enables me to get discounts on ingredients for me to test out more recipes that I could send to on my daily newsletter and test out for future products. It allows me to actually, I've talked and picked up a few clients and a few people onto my newsletter uh, just from working at the grocery store. And it allows me to really keep in touch with the mindsets and the clientele of the, the average person who wants to eat a little bit better and is going to the grocery store and suffers through these, these real life issues that, you know, you or me, we might not always think about because, you know, I'm a, I'm a young male from America. You know, they may be uh, an older mom of three and we have different life experience, different thought processes, but by kind of being in that similar environment, I can get a little bit of a peek into her mind and that'll help me address her problems better, be a better coach down the line. And ultimately that helps me give her more value tailored specifically to her. And then that's kind of the more value you give, the more people you help, uh, the more it returns back to you and the more money you can make out of a business. So no, I don't do it full time, but I think I do. Well, that, that's what you, you have to. That, that's something you have to do. Most most people don't have the luxury of being able to just. Right, I'm just going to do my passion full time now. Uh, I'm I'm exactly the same, and I feel there's there's all there's always a reason. My my father always put it very well when I was in a, when I was doing a job that I didn't really enjoy or didn't know why I was doing it. There's always you're there for a reason there's something you need to learn from that situation do you agree with that oh definitely i think that's actually um the opposite of that is a huge part of what stops people from going forward with whatever they want i mean if you if you think about it a lot of people it seems that they think more in terms of larger chunks of time instead of those you know, minutes here, minutes there. I mean, I was reading the other day, I, I completely forgot the guy's name, uh, but there was someone he had to commute on the train. He had maybe like half an hour going in, half an hour going out to get to work on the train. And he spent that hour a day uh, just writing. And in a few months he had this book and it turned into a best-selling novel and it jump-started his career. And so, I mean, if you could, if you could take 15 minutes to film an awesome YouTube video every day for a year, you'd get over 300 YouTube videos and you'd put them up consistently. Um, you know, what could that do for you? That would be an amazing asset. People would see it, more people would see it as more time passes. You'd continue to sharpen your knowledge and sharpen your presentation skills. And it's just a fantastic asset in that way. So you don't need a lot of time to really work on what you're passionate about. And in the other time, you have to be flexible and be good at kind of reframing everything you do so that it fits into this kind of larger purpose or larger mission, what you're pursuing in life. Yeah, man, for sure. And I think you, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. You really have because this is, it's much like, I'll, I'll, I'll speak from my example. I am my my day job is recruitment. Okay? I didn't know a damn thing about recruitment. I was a personal trainer before this, and they took a chance on me. And I jumped into this job that I do now. And what's the number one skill in it? It's holding interviews, being able to interview someone. And when I started in recruitment, I had no idea I was going to end up doing podcasts. 
So <laughs> it's funny how everything flows into everything.、Uh, but you gotta be aware of it. You gotta have your eyes and your mind open to the fact that there's things that you can learn from each situation. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from it all. And let's let's move it forward a little bit, Zach. Zach, you're an author. How did you end up becoming an author? What what did you do to become an author? Oh, I just wrote. <laughs> Besides, right? Like, what gave you the motivation to write your first bit of literature? I mean, yeah. So it was kind of actually like really selfish、uh, because basically I have always been a fan of like buying books and buying these online courses, and I'm I'm just a sucker for a good offer and good advertising, I guess.、Um, yeah. But yeah, even kind of traveling around a little bit and spending my money that way to learn, there was a point where I just kind of got sick of it because it wasn't really helping me. I was just I was buying too much stuff, and it was pulling me in a hundred different directions at once.、Uh, so I kind of just shut it down for a period of time and said, I'm not going to buy anything new. I'm just going to review the best stuff that I've found so far and write out kind of how it's worked for me. Like like Bruce Lee says that you want to just pick the best from kind of each thing and turn it into your own path and your own way.、Uh, that's terribly paraphrased, but you get the idea.、Um, so you just take the best stuff, and then I like to to write it out because it just organizes it for me even further, and it kind of helps me. It's kind of like having a conversation with yourself. That if you can write it out, you can. Read it back. You can edit it. You can see how, you know, one of like step one may be a little bit more advanced. So you need to kind of ease into that a little bit.、Um, and then over time, it just kind of transforms into this really amazing resource that you can share with people. It's full of value. And there's a big part of kind of having this this fitness business. Is that it has to work for you first. So that if it works for you, then first of all, you're going to be a hell of a lot more passionate about it because you're not selling someone shit that doesn't work, that you don't know if it works.、Uh, two, it's going to be you're going to be an expert on it because it's what you made. It comes from you. You seeped in it.、Um, and then three, it's just going to be it's just going to kick ass because it's like amazing and that's. It's all tied back into that passion. Yeah, man, and、um, I, I think I know the quote. Let's see if I know it off the top of my head. I think it is: adapt what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. I'm pretty sure it's the Bruce Lee quote. Oh yeah, that sounds a lot better than the way I said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was I was just reading uh, uh, some things on Bruce Lee today, and I literally just saw so serendipitous moment there.、Um, but yeah, man, perf- you, you got to be to be an author. I think it is that that quote really helps because that's all most most books and most. Forms of literature are nowadays. There's the foundations that are out there that have been out there for generations, and then it's how people adapt what they're saying to their lives and what what, what works for them. So, becoming an author was that、um, was that always on on was that always a plan for you to become an author? Um, kind of. I always I always loved reading and writing. I mean, you know, I I told you a little bit of my story before that um you know I was. Extremely heavy, asthma, allergies, the whole nine yards. So I wasn't doing much socially.、Um, so I would always hang out with a good book, and I just read and read,、um, and I became good at it. And I kind of, kind of fell in love with words and the way that that's kind of how you interpret the the whole world through language, and that's kind of.、Um, A big factor in anything. If you're going to achieve weight loss, or if you're going to make a, a successful business, it's really the words that you use and the stories that you tell yourself, in a way.、Um, so I always just love to kind of play around with words. And when I was younger, I would kind of experiment with blogging. I wasn't really doing anything consistently. And I think, kind of going aside for a sec, just to make a note that. You know, writing—it might not 
necessarily be your thing. It's something that you could obviously get better at with practice. Um, but starting out, if you're not a writer, you could always make videos or, you know, you make podcasts. That's awesome. So you could start off with another type of medium and still build up that library, build up that content. And then you could always um, do something easily to switch over. So you could take, you know, the top 17 best tips from the Fit Pro podcast, make it into a book, and you just kind of effortlessly opened up a whole second avenue. Because some people are going to get more out of listening to a podcast. Some people are going to get more reading a book. Some people get more out of videos. It's, it's really, there's no best way to do it. Because each person who, you know, follows a video, uh, an audio, or a book is going to think that the way that they learn the best is the best way. And so it's kind of about starting where you're at. And then you could always expand. So you don't have to start off with a huge stretch. You can start off with what's easy and available to you and get that, that instant win, that boost of success and motivation right off the bat. You just like you just described what I'm actually doing at the moment in terms of I am actually writing uh, an ebook with the top. It was, it was going to be the top 20 tips from the Fit Pro podcast. <laughs> Maybe I should just quit nutrition and just start being a psychic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically <laughs> psychic. You mentioned my past. You mentioned my future. What am I doing right now, <laughs> man? Um, so the next thing you done and the next thing you, you, you're currently in the process of doing is you're a lecturer as well and I think um, it takes a certain amount of confidence look I love public speaking that's why I like being on the mic but I, I actually it's euphoric being in front of a crowd and actually moving a crowd and being able to um, basically preach to a crowd on something you are passionate about and I love that about public speaking what made you get into becoming a lecturer Oh, I've always, I've always been a lecturer. I've been that way for a while. Um, I was, all right, so I didn't just kind of stumble into engineering. It's kind of been a long path of me um, going to like summer courses for science, doing the whole science fair circuit and all that stuff. And I just, I really loved being able to, you know, discover something and then share it with people you know put on put on the, the suit the blazer um, get in front of work that I've done and really share about how not just what I did but how important it is for other people to know about it and how um, it could really impact a lot of people's lives so that was kind of in the past with some genetic experiments and with um, some like DNA stuff but I wanted to have more of that actually. And instead of working in a lab and looking at minute details, I want to focus on bigger picture stuff to help people more, more immediately. Cause I mean, it's, it's great to come up with genetic therapies and stuff like that, that could cure, you know, hundreds of million people of cancer and other disorders. But to me, it seemed a little bit detached uh, and a little bit impersonal from meeting with people and helping them face to face. In addition, I feel that, uh, well, not that I feel, I feel that because through countless research papers and uh, meeting with people that nutrition is kind of, is the foundation of health. And that if you have proper nutrition, your incidence or risk of getting any of these chronic diseases is drastically reduced. Uh, so I feel that starting with first things first, I want to help people eat better so that they could improve their quality of life and really unlock more of that, that freedom and happiness and self-confidence, which is kind of what I feel my path was. I just want to share it with other people because it's, it's really it's fucking awesome to experience. Absolutely, man. I got to agree with you there. When when you're sharing your passion with people and genuinely helping people out, there's there's no better feeling. Um, just one step back on creating like your content and being a lecturer. 
the, it's very much what a podcast does. And I've, for the first time, I experienced the other day, yesterday, um, someone coming up to me and going, "I need help with so and so. Could you be able to help me? Because obviously, I'm, I've got my personal training background and I know a little bit about nutrition as well. But then I've gone, look, actually." interviewed someone the other day Spencer Posey that knows way more about this than me here's the link check it out uh, it's actually a, a very rewarding feeling knowing that I created a bit of content that then can help people out over and over and over again so bit, bit of a bit of a um, reflection there and it was actually actually really really cool now as a practical nutrition coach How's that different from a normal nutrition coach? <laughs> uh, you call me abnormal now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing. No, you don't want to be normal. <laughs> well, all right. With so with regular nutrition, that's kind of what I consider um, really, really specific and reduced nutrition, because the field of nutrition is still very, very young. And so you have all these kind of researchers uh, picking away at the basics, the, the carbs, the fats, the, the protein, all of the vitamins and minerals and things like that. And to me, nutrition is just blasting apart food to these obscure concepts. I mean, the first thing I talk about um, in my book, the, the Practical Fat Loss Solution, is that calories don't really exist. So if you if you think about it, it's so weird. The whole nutrition system is so detached that they have something that scientists came up with, calories, that are just measures of heat. You can't, there's no way to, there's nothing physical to pull out a calorie from a piece of food. It's, it's part of the innate energy in what you're eating. It's, it's just food. Um... And I think people get too caught up in nutrition and get alienated from what they're eating so that, you know, they can count, well, for weight loss specifically, they can count their macros um, and they could they can eat and enjoy, you know, protein, carbs, fats. But what does that look like? Are they eating, you know, um, good sources of protein that their body is assimilating well or are they eating you know protein that's from conventional meat that has all of these steroids and hormones in it and comes from you know animals eating other animals and all of this processed stuff that just accumulates omega-6 fatty acids in their body and leads to inflammation and they feel that they're doing the right thing but they're actually buying into more foods that actually that knock down their health and so I feel that people are looking too closely at nutrition and don't get the big food picture so another example is I'm actually I've been vegan for about six years and uh, I don't tell everyone that they should be vegan as well I do support that people can use more plants and vegetables in their diet uh, but so does everyone and uh, basically, like when you go vegan, that doesn't that's, that doesn't mean that you're eating healthier. Um, a lot of people think of vegans as kind of like these skinny health guys, uh, but you know, especially in college, I know half dozen vegans who just live off of beer and, and French fries and Oreos. I can't forget can't forget those. Um, and so <laughs> you can't you can't define health by these terms of what you eat. You know, even gluten-free, half the people, probably more than half the people, don't really know what gluten is in general, but they think that cutting out gluten is healthy for them. But really, they're cutting out a lot of processed carbohydrates and eating more whole food, plant-based foods, which is going to help them lose weight and gain health anyway. And I've seen a lot of actually uh, impact of people trying to cut out gluten and they don't do it 100% because they don't exactly know what gluten is, which is part of the issue. And it could impact your uh, bacterial, the bacterial flora and cause even more issues. And it could make it more difficult for doctors to diagnose 
um, certain symptoms and disorders you have if you really are, uh, if you really have celiac or some kind of gluten intolerance. So you really have to understand what you're eating. Just stick with the basics. Eat more plants. Eat more whole foods. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you have Twinkies for breakfast, McDonald's for lunch, and I don't know some other crap for dinner. If you start with that and you add in more fruits and vegetables, you will still lose weight and gain health. Like it's it's not an all or nothing approach, and it's not as complicated or difficult as most people make it seem. I think you you again hit the nail on the head because. I think just commercially, uh, with all the, the supplement companies and as well as just the met the media, they use all these buzzwords. They've got their like the gluten free and they got these low low carb diets and the calorie reduced diets, etc. And people don't really know what healthy eating is. <laughs> At, like from my experience, you don't need to drastically overhaul your like overhaul your entire way you eat. Again, you just need to add. Yeah, your your plant based nutrition. You just need to add your your fruits and vegetables. You don't need to take it all away all at once. And I think people, when they do that, they realize that man, the stuff that the supplement companies etc have been pumping out there for years in the magazines makes zero fucking sense because from personal experience, I went vegetarian for six months. Mm-hmm. Um, I was eating obviously a lot lower uh, amounts of protein because I was doing the, the bro thing back then where I was having my uh, 200 grams of protein a day uh, from my protein shakes and my mass gainers and my, my steak and my chicken etc and then I just went and I switched to a um, vegetarian diet for six months as a um, just just to see how how it worked and I didn't lose any weight I didn't gain any weight. I actually felt stronger. I felt better for it. I was less bloated. Like, all this stuff that you get pumped and fed makes no sense real realistically. But when you when like when you were talking about just calories, it, the what the word itself and what is a calorie, most people wouldn't be able to tell you what a calorie is. <laughs> it's, it's a, when you put it that way, it actually my eyes actually went, oh, really? Yeah. That, that, that makes real sense. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just really frustrating because I mean you have to with any kind of field you need a foundation first and a you know a, a bunch of words and all the stuff to kind of build on top and create a really established science out of something. Um, and with nutrition, it's it's kind of like this. I think it's a like a Chinese proverb that uh, they have it's a story about you have an elephant and the emperor takes five blind guys and has one touch the elephant's tail one touch the elephant's tusk one touches the stomach one touches the trunk and um, they all have to kind of describe what they're touching one thinks it's a baseball bat the other thinks it's a broom because of the tail one thinks it's a pillar to a building and this extremely reduced approach to science and nutrition is doing the same effect because you're looking at individual nutrients outside of the body most of the time in test tubes without any of the body's cofactors isolated from real food sources. I mean, there was um, this really cool study by this Chinese guy that I can't pronounce his name starts with an H. He's one of um, Colin Cabell's good friends. But he was doing research on uh, vitamin C in apples. And he discovered that the vitamin C in apples, it's kind of a rainbow of vitamin C. So there's over a uh, hundred different types, different versions, different um, you know, repetitions of this vitamin C in apples, and they're all slightly different. But when you eat the apple, you absorb much more vitamin C because it has all of its cofactors. I kind of, I, I was on um, the Vital Way podcast and I was kind of describing it like uh, Ocean's Eleven. That, you know, you have 
food comes in these packages, these groups, and everyone has a different role. You know, you have one guy who scopes out the place, the other guy charms the guards, uh, you have the getaway guys, you have all of these different roles that the components in your food play, so you can't really just focus on the one active ingredient that, you know, gets you the money or, you know, improves your circulation or does whatever you're looking for. Um, it's really a package deal. And when you just isolate that effect, you lose a lot of the potency of it. And so it's as simple as eating real food. <laughs> and that was episode 15 of the Fit Pro Podcast. That is two months of episodes. Guys, this is a big deal. We've been doing this for a while now, and um, I feel like I'm just getting comfortable. So the best is yet to come. Um, the next episode will be a summary of July. And because the year's flying by, guys, the year is flying. Hopefully these episodes are getting better and better and better. That is the goal. Now, for the end of this episode, I really just wanted to reinforce um, supporting your local talent, supporting your local businesses and entrepreneurs. That being said, my little brother has started his own apparel company. How amazing is that? Um, who, who knew? It runs in our family being very um, motivated to not work for the man for the rest of our lives. But he has started a company called Alpha State Apparel uh, based in Perth, WA. If you want to show the love, there'll be a banner on the ad. Again, I'm not getting any money for this, guys. I am just promoting because you got to support your family. Okay, before anybody else supports them, you have to support them. And what he's doing, I think, is amazing, and he deserves to be promoted. So, Alpha State Apparel, they have two shirts. They got a black one and a white one. They got prints on them. They're really good. It's a lifestyle brand, 100% cotton. Head to your website. Head to, head to his website. I'll leave a link in the show notes and uh, or just head to the, we- the website itself www.alphastateapparel.com.au buy yourself 50 of them bitches as chris jones would say and um yeah just support the local talent guys we we have to support local industry um it helps everybody out that being said guys whew, We've had a good time today, Zach Zeller. Part 2 will come up. Um, it'll be episode 17 because we got the July summary. Unless I bump it forward. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I gotta go. Enjoy the rest of your... What is it? It's Friday today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will catch you on Tuesday. Peace. <laughs>